Most people know the story of how Honda pulled out of Formula 1 in 2008, the team won the championship as Braun GP in 2009 and then sold up to Mercedes. But there was another key decision Honda took a decade earlier that also influenced what we know today as surely the greatest team in F1 history. But in the space of a few weeks in 1999, the project went from potentially becoming a Japanese Ferrari to being stopped entirely. Honda chose to return to F1 only as an engine supplier, with BAR swooping in to land the deal from under the noses of Jordan. Before we explain why Honda pulled the plug on its own team, if you want to hear more stories like this, plus get the inside track on what's going on in modern day F1, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We're very grateful that so many of you have chosen to come along and join us for the ride, and we appreciate all the support. News of Honda's intention to return to F1 with a works presence broke early in 1998. But the manufacturer, which had been represented on the F1 grid by Mugen since officially pulling out at the end of 1992, kept quiet through the summer of 98 while it discussed how to go about rejoining the grid. The most serious of the talks it held were with Jordan, which started running Mugen Honda engines in 1998. Eddie Jordan proposed that Honda could buy 40% of his team with the option to take another 10 or 15 percent in the future to increase its control. Eddie thought he was on to a deal, but then Honda came back with revised terms. It wanted to buy 100 percent of the team. Jordan thought it might be the best thing for the team's future, so he asked if Honda would let him keep 10 percent. It said yes, but on the condition that Eddie could not be involved at all. When Jordan asked why that was, Honda told him, Mr. Jordan, your name and your brand is better known in motorsport at this moment than Honda. Honda knew if it bought into Jordan at the height of the team's popularity, it would be difficult to get recognition for itself. Jordan considered the proposal, and he says he doesn't know if his ego got in the way, but he decided that walking away from the team entirely would be too much, so he declined Honda's offer. If you want to hear more about this whole story, check out our Bring Back V10's Classic F1 podcast, which includes ex-Jordan designer Gary Anderson recalling his involvement in the talks with Honda. In October 1998, Honda announced its plans to enter F1 with a full works team for 2000. Honda president Hiroyuki Yoshino said it would be difficult for Honda to work with an organisation from a different culture, hello McLaren, so Honda was choosing to go it alone. Honda commissioned a test car from Dallara, which would be run in early 1999 by a team headed up by former Ferrari and Tyrrell designer Harvey Posselthwaite using a 1998 Mugen Honda engine. As anticipation built around Honda's plans, it tried to calm things down by saying the test project was just to evaluate a possible entry. But by now the FIA had already reserved the 12th and final slot on the F1 grid for Honda, so the expectation was it was definitely coming in. The test car had its first shakedown runs in private at Virano and Mugello in Italy either side of Christmas and New Year, and during that time more ex-Tyrrell staff joined Posselthwaite, now Tyrrell's entry in F1 had been taken over by BAR. Honda made its first appearance in public at a small test at Jerez in January 99, where it set the fastest time. Jos Verstappen was quickest by a second at a test featuring Benetton, BAR and Stewart. While none of the established teams ran very reliably at what was little more than a shakedown for their new cars, the Honda performance turned heads and raised a few eyebrows. Weeks later, the FIA announced a new rule that all cars would have to pass scrutineering to run in testing, including any cars not competing in the World Championship. Officially, this was aimed at any test cars, with BMW expected to hit the track later in the year with its own development mule ahead of its race return with Williams in 2000. But the Honda Racing Development Team felt it was an implication its car was running in an illegal state to set quick times. The team said it would be pointless to do that, and Postlethwaite said he was fine with the rule change, even if he felt it was one rule for us and another for everyone else. To us it just sounds like one rule for everybody. Honda ran in a bigger test at Barcelona in February with seven other teams present, and Verstappen was ninth fastest, sat between the two Moog and Honda powered Jordans in the times, 1.3 seconds down on Mika Hakkinen's McLaren.
Ahead of a Honda board meeting in March where a decision was expected on how to re-enter F1, HRD pitched for a yearly running budget of £125 million. While that seemed quite sensible by today's levels of spending, at the time that would have put Honda's budget at the same level as Ferrari's. This eye-watering figure drove a bigger wedge between two divided sides at the top of Honda management. As well as those who were committed to the idea of going all-in with a works team, there was another side that was concerned about the costs. There were suggestions in the background that a works engine program with Jordan could be a cheaper way back in, while Honda's US racing arm was pointing out that it had achieved success in America on a fraction of the budget being put forward for an F1 project. Postlethwaite was understood to have pitched for such a high number because he was encouraged to provide a worst case scenario for Honda so the board could make a decision based on what an F1 team could cost at the highest end. But when the board failed to agree on a way forward in late March, Postlethwaite sensed the HRD project might be in danger. He travelled to Japan at the start of April and wrote a letter to Honda management in desperation outlining a plan to save the team. Postlethwaite's plan was for HRD to be restructured as a private team to enter F1 in 2000. He and his management team would find the funding and own 60%, with Honda owning the other 40% and supplying free engines with the right to take full control whenever it wanted. The idea was that this would give Honda a more gradual entry into F1, reduce the pressure for immediate results and reduce the budget required without throwing away the investment and effort that had already gone into the project. HRD was understood to already have $40 million lined up in sponsorship from what was then Benetton's title sponsor. Postlethwaite's death following a heart attack in April is often cited as the reason Honda gave up on the HRD project. But rumours had emerged before then from the Brazilian Grand Prix that Honda was talking to BAR about a work supply for 2000. The deal was done at the end of April, but neither side could confirm it publicly. Supertech boss Flavio Briatore was demanding BAR pay the full value of its £16 million engine supply contract for 2000, rather than a £9 million break clause. When that was finally resolved and BAR Honda was revealed to the world, the HRD test team was still running its car and the crew were told of Honda's decision just before the announcement. BAR and Honda said the tie-up was more than just an engine supply deal. Honda said it would be involved in total machine development with the team and that BAR's status as a new entry in 1999 made it the most flexible candidate for Honda to join forces with. Honda's decision went down badly with the rest of the F1 grid, although that was partly because the existing teams were hoping Honda would fill the 12th slot, meaning Toyota would have to buy an existing entry out when it came along a couple of years later. Jordan retained its Mugen Honda supply for 2000, then got works engines for the next two years. It finished ahead of BAR in both seasons, but was then paid by Honda to end the partnership. Eddie Jordan felt that decision was taken to remove the thorn of his team from BAR's side. Over the following years, Honda gradually increased its involvement with BAR, eventually taking the team over, winning a race with Jensen Button, then producing two horrible cars and pulling out of F1 at the end of 2008. Ross Braun then led a takeover of the team, a Mercedes engine went into the back of the car Honda spent an eye-watering amount of time and money developing, and Braun GP sensationally won the championship with Button before selling to Mercedes at the end of 2009. Under Mercedes ownership, what was once BAR and Honda has done okay since then. How different do you think F1 history would have looked if Honda had gone ahead with the project? And should it have gone it alone with HRD, or should it have picked Jordan instead of BAR? And perhaps most importantly, should it have stayed at the end of 2008 rather than walking away from F1 entirely? If you like this story, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and remember to check out our Bring Back V10's Classic F1 podcast for much more detail on everything that happened with the HRD project.